However, now you can be able to see the different kind of risks you're going to be exposed to as you invest in the various uh, fixed income instruments, uh, you know, out there. Therefore, I'm going to do, first of all, a brief introduction of uh, who Saiton is and um, what you're licensed to do as a company. Therefore, on the second, uh, you know, on the second, sl on the second um, slide, you're going to look at the introduction. And then we go through the fixed income instruments we have. And then we have a, you know, a focus on a fixed income now. And then I can be able to give you a small uh, snippet of what Saiton is offering. So first of all, um, if we go to you know, uh, slide five, that is about us, what the company stands for. What is Saiton? And uh, you're clearly saying that Saiton is an alternative, is an investment manager. Therefore, we are an investment management firm that is licensed to operate in East Africa. Uh, we also have, um, you know, a presence in Finland that is in Europe and also, the, uh, you know, and, uh, in the U.S. Uh, therefore, you're providing investors, you know, with exposure into high growth, uh, high growth in East Africa region. Therefore, we can be able to have uh, institutional investors who are able to come in and partner with us and uh, they can be able to enjoy the opportunities here in East Africa. And uh, our investors include global, uh, local institutional investors, <clears throat> high net worth individuals, and also clients who are, you know, residing in, in the diaspora. Therefore, through our, you know, um, offices in Finland and the US, we are able to tap into the opportunities you're seeing in the diaspora. Uh, we have a small fact file there. Uh, our total, you know, projects under mandates uh, are running into 82 billion. And what we mean by 82 billion is the work of our projects of, of our projects upon completion. In terms of the number of projects, we have uh, 10 projects in real estate. And uh, all these projects have already been commissioned. It's only that now the company, uh, through the real estate arm, we decided to do one project at a time. However, Saiton, as an investment management firm, real estate only informs one of our underlying investment classes. Therefore, uh, we, you know, we don't do real estate exclusively in terms of investments. We also have uh, other underlying investment assets uh, whereby you can be able to invest uh, investors' money and be able to generate return to the client. Now, in terms of uh, agents across the country, we have uh, 20 agents. And uh, like I said, we have two you know, offices uh, in the diaspora, that is in Finland and the US. And uh, in terms of staff, we have uh, 400 staff members. Now, our unique franchise is differentiated by the fact that we are independent. We are not affiliated, uh, be it politically or uh, otherwise. Therefore, we have a clear focus on serving our clients. The interests of our clients are coming first, and therefore you're able to you know, uh, perform better as a company because we are independent and therefore we have minimized conflicts of interest. Number two, we are an alternative investment manager. What we mean by an alternative investment manager is that we, our, clear, our key focus is into the alternative assets. Uh, we have uh, actually two products, which are two uh, fixed income products, uh, whose, um, you know, the main, or rather what I can be able to say, the underlying, the biggest underlying investment class is in the alternative assets in the private markets. So alternative investments simply mean you are investing in the private market. Remember, investments can be able to be split into two. It's either you invest in the public market, which is also known as the traditional market, or you can be able to invest into the alternative market. Alternative markets are also called private markets. Therefore, data has it that alternative markets have been able to outperform public markets for a long period of time in terms of return. Therefore, when you're investing in real estate, you're investing in private equity, and you're also investing in structured finance uh, through the structured products, therefore it means you have invested in the alternative assets. However, when you're going to invest in treasury bills, treasury bonds, uh, you know, uh, those are government securities, you're investing in cash and term deposits in banks, and you're also investing in uh, maybe selected commercial papers, then you can clearly say that you're investing in the public markets. Therefore, when you invest in the public markets, 
you don't get uh, you know the superior returns you are getting in the alternative assets however later on in this discussion you're going to see that uh, it's uh, when you're investing in uh, the different kinds of risks you are exposing yourself when you're investing in the alternative markets and uh, also when you're investing uh, you know the you know your funds in the public markets therefore it's a delicate balancing act between risk and reward and uh, we'll be able to look at that later on uh, Cyton also has a strong alignment, considering that every staff member is an owner of the firm through the employee share ownership plans. And, uh, you know, this one is also regulated under, you know, the collective investment schemes because also ESOPs are considered to be collective investment schemes. Therefore, as one of the staff members is confirmed, therefore is allocated an equivalent amount of uh, shares in the company that is equivalent to his salary. Therefore, you're going to look at that as well. And uh, we have committed partners in the sense that uh, we have a strong uh, member, member, uh, member team of the board. Uh, we have a strong team in the board uh, that have uh, enough disposition, especially on matters to deal with finance and uh, uh, legal matters. Now, the reason why you exist, if we move to the next slide, you're going to see that uh, we are existing because... Uh, Africa, first of all, is presenting us uh, is presenting to us uh, very attractive investment opportunities. Uh, we are an emerging market as a country, and uh, many countries in Africa are considered to be, you know, lucrative in terms of opportunities. And uh, later on, we are going to see uh, we also have a financial product that can be able to act as a window into the sub-Saharan Africa uh, financial markets. Therefore, Africa. Uh, amid uh, many challenges you're facing, we also have an opportunity. Therefore, that's why Saiton uh, is clear in terms of uh, uh, having its presence in Africa. And, um, uh, you know, there are opportunities that are likely to yield high and stable returns. Therefore, the, you know, the way we are operating as a company is pretty simple. First of all, you're collecting funds from clients. And the way in which you're collecting funds from clients is that you can be able to collect uh, funds, like I said, from high net worth individuals. And high, a high net worth individual is an individual who's uh, considered, first of all, to be, you know, uh, in terms of uh, matters to do with finance and investments, is an, in, an individual who's sophisticated on matters finance and investments. And um, is an individual who can as well uh, be able to be called that this is an individual who really understands how real estate market works. Also, that one can as well be, you know, uh, considered to be a high net worth individual. A high net worth individual also, uh, there is a minimum amount of uh, funds or rather income he can have at his disposal that he can be able to use uh, in investments. Therefore, the definition of a high net worth individual according to the Capital Markets Authority, however, this definition was given long time ago, is an individual who can be able to comfortably access 100,000 and be able to put this amount into investments. But you can be able to see as the rate of inflation has grown over the years, our uh, currency is slowly losing value. Therefore, you can easily say that uh, 100,000 shilling is not a minimum, you know, it cannot be used as a threshold uh, amount to define who a high net worth individual uh, is. Therefore, you can easily say, uh, according to Saiton, we say an individual who can be able to access at least 1 million Kenya shillings as uh, disposable income and be able to put this amount into investment can uh, therefore be called uh, a high net worth individual. Uh, a high net worth individual, sorry. Therefore, uh, you can be able to define a high net worth individual as an individual who can be able to access at least a million shilling and above and commit you know, this amount into an investment going by the definition we have uh, uh, at Saiton. Number two, uh, a high net worth individual can as well be an individual who's sophisticated on matters financial, uh, finance and investments, is an individual who's previously been able to be exposed to the various investment classes or he has invested previously, be it in the stock market or be it in the money markets and really understands the fundamentals of investments. Uh, he can be an individual also who's exposed uh, or, or previously has been able to go through uh, college or university and has attained at least a degree in finance or uh, business course or a related uh, um, 
course. Therefore, he has a full understanding of what investments and uh, uh, investments are and uh, the risks associated with these different types of investments. Therefore, a high net worth individuals can be considered to be an individual who has access to funds in terms of disposable income and can be able to commit a certain am an amount or someone who has enough wealth of experience or understanding of what investment is. Uh, moving on, uh, we can be able to look at uh, maybe how we are able to invest. Like I said, we're investing in opportunities uh, which uh, are considered to be, you know, uh, lucrative. And you can be able to see that uh, we have a key, uh, you know, uh, interest in the alternative assets. Uh, like I said, I defined alternative assets to be assets which are being given or which are uh, being provided from the private markets and not uh, the public markets. Therefore, alternative assets have been able to outperform public assets, uh, not only in return, but also in terms of flexibility. Therefore, you're looking at real estate uh, and not just for walls and a roof uh, along Sika Road or, or along uh, you know, uh, Mombasa Road, but you're talking about asset class real estate in places which have been considered as blue zone areas by the UN, places which have the highest capital appreciation and the highest rental yield. Therefore, when I say that we normally invest as a company who invest in real estate, you're not just building any four walls and a roof in uh, any area. However, uh, through our real estate arm, a department called uh, you know uh, research and deal origination we are able to carry out a detailed research uh, in various pockets in nairobi and you're able to evaluate these areas and be able to come up with areas that can be able to offer uh, you know a client uh, the best capital appreciation and the best rental yield therefore uh, we are able to test this uh, through various matrices for example we normally uh, ensure that at least we have 40 uh, 20 to 40 percent pre-sales uh, before we break ground as a sign of getting that you know uh, you know sign or that test that indeed this project is viable so we don't uh, break ground uh, without having at least pre-sales so we need to get uh, you know uh, pre-sales first before we break ground and uh, I'm talking about 20 to 30 percent of the project has to be bought off plan so that you can be able to start the project number two we can be able to look at hospitality uh, hospitality can be able to give us uh, the best. Remember, the population in Kenya is growing. Therefore, anything to do with education, hospitality, uh, and even the financial services, if well executed, you can be able to see that you can be able to break even and then you can be able to have uh, high fair value gains in investments. Uh, in financial sector, we're investing in uh, Taiwan listed banks. Uh, at the Nairobi Securities Exchange, and you will later see which products are able to tap into uh, the opportunities in the stock market. Now, uh, moving on swiftly to the way we deliver the best possible returns uh, to the client. Therefore, we are going to grow the economy and so forth. However, you can be able to understand that the way we collect funds from a client, um, this concept is pretty simple. We are saying that as you go to the bank with your one million, to maybe invest in a fixed deposit in a bank, or you're going to put that money in a savings account. Remember, the bank is going to give you 18, uh, you know, 6% on a fixed deposit for 1 million, 6 to 7%, let's say an average of 7%, depending that, uh, considering that banks are giving different rates on fixed uh, investments. Now, however, if you go back to the same bank to borrow the same 1 million, using your 1 million in a fixed deposit as collateral, this bank is not going to give you that uh, loan at 6% or at 7%. Instead, they're going to tell, well, we are okay with your collateral because you have a fixed deposit with us. However, you're going to charge you 18% on the loan you're going to give you. Therefore, you can be able to see that whereas you're able to deposit your 1 million at, them, uh, at, the, at this particular bank, they're giving you 6%. However, when you're going to borrow, the same amount using your cash as collateral, they are going to give you a loan at 18%. Therefore, uh, when you're looking at this, you're, you're able to see there's a very big disparity in terms of uh, comparing 6%, uh, the one they gave you, compared to the 18%. Therefore, uh, as site on asset managers, we decided that you're going to avoid banks as intermediaries and go directly to these investors and tell them, Instead of you going to do a fixed deposit in a bank and the bank is going to give you 6% or 7% on your 1 million, 
and then when you're going to borrow, they're going to give you 18%, uh, they're going to charge you 18% interest. Now, bring that 1 million directly to Saiton and you're able to give you that 18% instead. Therefore, in so doing, Saiton is trying to borrow from you and you, you're going to lend the 1 million to Saiton. And in so doing, you are participating in the loan market, but as opposed to you, the other, uh, in the other scenario I gave of you going to the bank and being exposed to maybe the depositor's risk and the bank getting exposed to the lender's risk uh, when you're going to borrow from the same bank, now you're turning to the tables and you're avoiding these banks as uh, intermediaries. So you're doing this intermediation and you're going directly to the investor and he's giving us his 1 million and in return, you're going to invest this money and give him the 18%. So that is uh, how the 18%, especially on our fixed income products, uh, came into being. So you're trying to change uh, the tables here. And instead uh, of you, you know, borrowing from the bank, you're going to lend the money instead to Saiton. So that is the whole philosophy. And that is the concept uh, behind some of our fixed income products you're going to look uh, later on. So moving on to the next page, you're going to look at, uh, you know, uh, maybe you can move on to the, yeah, thank you. You're going to look at our board of directors. Uh, we have, sorry, can go back please to the board of directors. Yeah, thank you. You're going to have the board of directors. We have Professor Mugendi, uh, who's the chairman. And then we have Mr. Madhav, who's the non-executive member. We have Auntie Juicy, uh, the one who's sitting and uh, representing the interests of uh, our strategic investor from Finland. Uh, that is the Taleri Group. And then we have Mr. Nasa. And we also have uh, Mr. Mazav, and we have uh, James Kaina. We have Edwin Dande, who's the CEO. And we have uh, Elizabeth Nkunku, who's uh, the head of uh, is the company CFA. And then we have uh, Patricia Anjama, who's the, uh, you know, uh, the head of legal as well. Therefore, we're going to move on to the, to the next page. Uh, you can be able to see we've observed uh, these, uh, a slight gender balance. Next, now you're going to look at the collective investment schemes. Like I said, Ali, uh, the collective investment schemes we offer site on these are, uh, you know, regulated products that are offered uh, well within uh, CMA's regulation. Remember, collective investment schemes uh, are offered under the Capital Markets Act, CAP 485, uh, 2001. Therefore, a collective investment scheme, by definition, is a product that operates through the concept of pulling funds together. So funds have to be pulled together in a custodial account that has been appointed by the fund manager in consultation, you know, uh, under, you know, supervision from the Capital Markets Authority. Therefore, collective investment scheme operate uh, using the concept of pulling funds together. And then these funds are going to be invested in the various investment classes as stipulated by the fund. So we are going to start with the site on money market fund. The site on money market fund is simply a short term and low risk and, uh, you know, an open ended investment vehicle. What I mean by open ended, it's a highly liquid investment product. And uh, by definition, a liquid uh, investment product, a product that has liquidity, simply means it's easily converted into cash. Therefore, you can walk in any time and be able to withdraw your funds from the site on money market fund. As a matter of fact, you don't need to walk into the office to withdraw or to access your funds in the site on money market fund. You can even, uh, you know, the site on money market fund, I think it's one of uh, the few money market funds in Kenya, which has been fully automated. Therefore, you can simply withdraw your funds from the site on money market fund using, you know, the USSD code, which is star 809 hash, and you can be able to withdraw your funds through M-Pesa. Or still you can be able to make a top up or you can even be able to initiate, you know, an investment into the site on money market fund by simply dialing star 809 hash and you can be able to go, uh, you know, the USSD will be able to prompt you to go to your MPS and then you can be able to transfer funds. Not to mention that uh, site on money market fund uh, is so easy to, you know, open an account because the minimum investment amount is 100 bob. Therefore, from any amount starting from 100 shilling, you can be able to activate and register yourself as a on money market account. And uh, this is a Kenya shilling account. And it's important to know that for the last one year, the site on money market fund account has been the one uh, which is leading all money market fund accounts in Kenya. And uh, it's been uh, giving 11% per annum. And uh, the average return of 11% per annum, of course, uh, it's compounding daily. And this return, uh, is subject to the prevailing market conditions. 
world over. Money market funds are uh, the rates which have been given by money market uh, funds accounts are all subject to the prevailing market conditions. And it's as a result of the underlying investment classes where the money is invested. And um, for money market funds, the monies are generally invested in government securities, mostly uh, treasury bills because they're short term, uh, cash deposits and fixed deposits in banks, and also uh, keenly selected commercial papers. So those are the three investment uh, classes where money, which is uh, been deposited in a money market fund, can be able to be invested. And, to, and it's important to know that the, you know, the preference of money market uh, funds in Kenya is really growing. Therefore, you can be able to see that uh, the money market fund account, uh, uh, you know, the assets under management for money market funds has been growing all through. And that one can be attributed by the fact that, uh, for example, for the last three months, we've seen uh, investors in the stock market, uh, you know, uh, selling off their assets, the risky assets, and they're all um, making a flight to safety and they're investing these funds, you know, in uh, money market funds, in, uh, you know, government securities, uh, cash deposits in banks, and all these are the underlying investment classes for money market funds. Therefore, the preference of money market funds has really come out as a liquid investment uh, that you can be able to tap into your money anytime. You can be able to withdraw. You can be able to come back. You can withdraw partially. You can withdraw everything. And then you can be able to make top-ups later on. The money market fund account, even if you withdraw everything, won't be closed, especially the site on money market fund. So it's more flexible, especially even for you know, the retail clans and also the corporate clans. We've seen circles, charmers, investment clubs, all, all of them are running to money market funds because money market funds are uh, short-term investments because you can be able to withdraw anytime. There's ease of entry and ease of exit. Number two, money market funds are giving you the flexibility. They're open-ended, they're liquid investments. And uh, most importantly, they're giving you what you call capital preservation because you cannot lose your cash the way it's happening in the stock market. So if you, if you have invested your 1 million in the site on money market fund, it means you never, not any day will you lose, will your principal decrease or you know, uh, be touched. Therefore, it means they're giving you capital preservation, not to mention you know, the power of compounding interest what it means by the power of compounding interest and the site on money market fund is compounding daily. It means that the interest your money is making today will be consolidated to the principal and therefore tomorrow you'll, have, you'll start on a different principal. So you'll have a new principal tomorrow. So the interest your money, your, your, you know, your new principal you make tomorrow will be consolidated to the principal and the day after tomorrow you'll have a new principal and so forth and so forth. So the power of compounding interest is another, is another eighth wonder of the world, and you can be able to see, therefore, it's benefiting the investor, uh, not only from um, you know, uh, capital preservation, but also the power of compounding interest and other benefits of pooled investments. For example, you know, uh, economies of scale, considering that you can start with a thousand shillings or a hundred shillings, and we have another investor, maybe a circle coming in with 10 million, Therefore, you're going to get those benefits of the power of compounding interest. I'll be able to answer a few questions as I go by. For example, someone was asking, um, why is the site on money market fund? How is the site on money market fund able to give good returns, especially uh, for the money market, uh, while other funds, and uh, maybe it means that uh, the funds, other funds which have been here for a longer time are not able to give uh, these superior returns? Now, the answer is simple. Now, remember, the site on money market fund is a relatively smaller fund compared to the other big players in the industry. Whereas I don't deny that the other players in the, in the industry have been able to have an advantage, what you can be able to say, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, the early start advantage, those people who came awesome. early, therefore they had an advantage of getting more clients than site on that started uh, the other day. However, I can be able to say the smaller the fund, the easier the management. Therefore, you're not going to have that form of lassitude in management, and you cannot be able to have, you're not going to have what you call, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, funds, uh, expenses associated with movement of funds. Therefore, as a young fund, we have more subscriptions as opposed to maturities. Therefore, a lot of money is coming in, 
as opposed to the funds or as, as opposed to the money which is going out. You can be able to see a uh, first move advantage. For example, the funds that came earlier, uh, I don't want to mention, the funds, the money market funds that began earlier, they had a first move advantage in the sense that they managed to consolidate many players in the market to invest in them, be it circles, be it individuals, and even high net worth individuals to invest in their money market funds. However, we've been able to see for the long period of time they've been in operational, they have more maturities. Now they're having maturities. Therefore, money is moving out. Therefore, the fund manager of this particular money market fund is experiencing more expenses to do with payments as opposed to you know, the new money market fund, like the site of money market fund, whereby we have more subscriptions as opposed to maturities. Number two, there's also the issue of these economies of scale. Whereas there is a benefit of economies of scale in money market funds because it's a pooled investment, you're able to see whereas the fund is going to continue growing, they'll reach a time now, the fund, uh, even if the fund is going to, to grow further, it's not going to have more returns to the uh, fund manager. Therefore, that fund is going to have these economies of scale, considering that it's not going to yield more return to the fund manager as opposed to a relatively smaller fund. Therefore, it's important to know that even if the site on money market fund being a relatively smaller bank, whose uh, assets under portfolio, uh, uh, assets under mandate currently are at around 1 billion Kenya shillings. However, you can be able to see as time goes by, as we're going to hit maybe 20 years from now, decades from now, therefore our return is likely to start going down, just obeying the curve of uh, you know, these economies of scale. Therefore, it's important for you as an investor to take advantage of the good returns you're giving currently now that the fund is young and you can be able to tap into these uh, uh, returns you're giving currently. And our return has been 11% on average for the last one year. Now I can move on to maybe the money market fund, which is the USD. And this one uh, is just simply the same. It's a replica of what we're giving in the money market fund in Kenya shillings. And uh, uh, it's basically the, the currency and uh, you know, the currency through which uh, you're going to invest in the USD. Therefore, it's going to benefit you, you know, uh, from the, you know, the stability of the dollar. Uh, therefore, the return you're going to get from the Kenya shillings, which is 11%. Now, the return you're going to get from the site on money market fund in USD is likely to be half or something less than half of the, uh, the return you're giving in the Kenya shilling. That has been the rule of the thumb. Now, uh, someone is asking, uh, I think it's Mark who's just complimenting that uh, the power of uh, comp compound and interest is another eighth wonder of the world. True, that's not me. That's a quote from uh, one of the, uh, you, know, the, you know, the presidents in the US. And I'm going to tell you who. Now, uh, the issue, someone is asking, the issue of capital preservation. Uh, we are aware uh, of MMFs uh, having trouble returning uh, investor funds, does this come about? Now, when you have uh, capital preservation, it means that uh, if you've invested your own million, or you've invested your own thousand, or you've invested your hundred thousand, it means there is no one day it's going to be touched. It's going to be reduced. The same way it happens. For example, contrary to what is happening in the stock market, you can be able to buy stocks which are worth one million, but if at all these stocks are going to fall, for example, what you're currently seeing in the stock market, the volatility, Therefore, it means you're going to lose funds. You're going to lose your cash. You can even go to negative. However, now that one is not exposed here in the money market, considering that no amount of investment in the money market is going to be allocated in the stock market. No amount of money in the money market is going to, invest in, uh, to be invested directly in real estate. Therefore, it's really a very uh, low-risk investment, and it's meant for you know, those investors who have been considered to be risk averse investors, investors who don't want to expose themselves to, uh, you know, high, uh, you know, what you can call, uh, you know, risks to do with the market volatility, you know, interest, uh, uh, you know, rate uh, volatilities and so forth. However, it's important to note again, uh, the returns we're giving on money markets are uh, subject to the prevailing market condition. Therefore, they can be able to go up and down. However, our rate as site on uh, money market fund has been stabilized at an average of 11% per annum on compounding, daily compounding. Now, uh, let me move on from that. Uh, we also have the, money, uh, the balance fund. 
Now, the site on balance fund is simply, as the name suggests, it's balanced in the sense that it has 50% uh, allocation in the public uh, fixed bonds and also it has 50% allocation in the stock market. Therefore, by saying balance, it means you also you are, you are exposed to moderate. Uh, you have a moderate risk exposure, considering that 50% of this portfolio is going to be invested in the stock market. Therefore, you're going to be exposed uh, into the volatility of the stock market at a moderate uh, exposure. Therefore, a balanced fund basically invests in uh, public, uh, or let me call them fixed bonds. Generally, you're investing in uh, money markets, 50% of that portfolio goes to uh, the underlying uh, assets for money market funds, and 50% uh, is going to the stock market. Now, I'm going to jump uh, the High Yield Fund and the Saiton Africa Financial Fund, and I'm going to talk about the Saiton Equity Fund before I proceed. Now, the Saiton Equity Fund uh, comes after the balance fund. It's normally the Saiton Money Market Fund or the Money Market Fund, which is low risk, and then you go to this uh, balance fund, which is moderately risky, and then you finish with the equity fund, uh, which is uh, highly somehow risky considering that it has 100% allocation in the stock market. Now, when you hear the stock market, what should come into your mind is volatility. Yeah? Uh, what should come into your mind is the risk, the inability for you to redeem uh, your stocks or uh, redeem your funds immediately. Therefore, uh, it's somehow long-term considering that it has uh, moderate illiquidity. Therefore, you cannot walk in any time and uh, you know, sell your stocks at uh, NSC considering that uh, selling your shares, it's also subject to having a buyer. Therefore, equity fund is giving you, a, it's, uh, in terms of risk exposure, it's uh, a bit high, highly risky. And then we have balance fund, which is moderately risky considering that it has 50-50 allocation, 50 in the money market, uh, and also 50% allocation in the stock market. And then we have the money market fund, which is risk averse, low risk, liquid, and open-ended uh, with capital preservation. Now, I'm going to move swiftly to the site on high yield fund. Now, the site on high yield fund at, uh, yeah, there, where, where the CASA is, uh, the site on high yield fund, uh, let me start by saying, it's a culmination of the Saiton High Yield Solution. Remember, at, at Saiton, our, our trademark product has been the Saiton High Yield Solution, which has been a structured product that has been, uh, a, it's a private placement. It means that the products previously, uh, the Saiton High Yield Solution is not being offered under regulation. But it's important to know that the one I'm discussing currently, it's not the Saiton High Yield Solution is the Saiton High Yield Fund. And all these pro products which are listed here are offered under regulation. They are offered under CMA's regulation. Therefore, the asset allocation is closely monitored by the Capital Markets Authority. However, again, even if a product is regulated, it's also up to the expertise of the fund manager to see where to invest the funds which is the best place I can be able to allocate these uh, funds. Therefore, uh, you know, regulation has really been confusing Kenyans. And, you know, Kenyans have been thinking that just because a product is regulated, by, just because a bank is regulated by, you know, CBK, it means that uh, I can be able to invest my money in a bank and uh, I can come anytime because there's that extra protection, there's that extra layer of protection against uh, you know, my funds. However, you've been able to see that even banks have been able to go down, right? Banks have been able to go and uh, have been able to fall and have been victims of uh, bank runs and so forth. So whereas regulation really, uh, you know, gives an investor that, you know, uh, you know, you can be able to have that, uh, you know, analogy that I'm, I'm protected, there's a third eye. However, what, uh, you know, it melts down to the expertise and the track record of the fund manager. Therefore, don't invest just because you've been told a product is regulated. And I'm not saying that regulated, regulation is bad. Regulation plays a major role in asset allocation. Whereby, for example, in a money market fund, the regulator is giving you, is telling you that 50% of the portfolio in a money market fund ought to be invested, you know, in cash and fixed deposits in banks. 25% must be invested in the government securities, mostly treasury bills, and the remaining 25% can be allocated in selected uh, 
you know, commercial papers. So what it means is that uh, the regulator is coming in and it's giving you, you know, those ratios in terms of asset allocation. We'll be able to see also in the, uh, in the pension funds, the regulator uh, coming in and giving, uh, you know, those ratios. So the site on high yield fund is a culmination of the site on high yield solution. This is a product uh, previously, the site on high yield solution, CHYS, has been previously offered, uh, is uh, being offered as a private placement, privately offered, uh, according to the capital markets regulation, uh, regulation 21 of 2001, uh, that are guiding uh, public offers, private offers, listing and disclosures. Therefore, uh, site on high yield solution has been previously uh, offered as a, uh, you know, a private offer. However, now the product is being pushed into regulation and it's become the site on high yield fund. Therefore, the site on high yield fund is squarely uh, offered under capital markets regulation and the funds are heavily invested in asset class real estate and uh, you know, the public uh, markets as well. Therefore, it has almost 80% uh, allocation in uh, investment grade real estate and 20% allocation in uh, uh, the public markets. Therefore, it's giving you the benefits of a high return, of superior returns from asset class real estate, and it's also giving you the liquidity aspect uh, as a result of the 20% allocation in the public markets. Therefore, the product is uh, highly liquid, uh, considering that uh, the minimum to invest is a million, and you can be able to access the funds uh, from the third month. Therefore, the lock-in period is three months, after which you can be able to withdraw any time and you can be able to make top-ups from 10,000 Kenya shillings. Therefore, the site on high yield fund is uh, a relatively liquid product compared to the site on high yield solution. At the same time, the site on high yield fund is offered under you know, uh, regulation of capital markets authority. However, the other site on uh, product called the site on high yield solution is a private placement uh, and, and, and last but not least, uh, it's illiquid. But uh, the site on high yield fund is highly liquid. You can be able to access your funds immediately after the third month. At the same time, it's giving you capital preservation. Your funds cannot be touched considering it has no allocation in the stock market. And lastly, we have the site on Africa Financial Services Fund that is giving you, oh no, sorry, let me just go back to site on high yield fund. I can see a question from Peter. Peter is asking, what is the return of the site on high yield fund? The site on high yield fund is giving you a return of 14% per annum, 14% per annum. And uh, therefore you can be able to see the, uh, that you can be able to tap into, uh, you know, the, the good returns you're giving in the site on high yield fund. But it's important to know that the 14% per annum, it's subject to the prevailing market conditions Therefore, it can be able to go up or down. However, it's important to know that uh, the rate has been stabilized at 14%. Now, in terms of tax, remember all collective investment schemes in Kenya are subject to taxation. And uh, taxation comes in on the return you're making as an investor. Therefore, you're subjected to 15% uh, uh, withholding tax on the interest that you've earned. Therefore, uh, allow me to repeat that you are subjected to 15% uh, in, uh, withholding tax reduction on every interest, on every penny that you're making as interest from all these investment products in, uh, under the collective investment schemes that are guided by the Capital Markets Act, CAP 485A, 2001. Therefore, if you're going to invest maybe your 1 million and uh, the rate of return you're giving you on the site on high yield fund is 14%. It means at the end of the year, you have at least 140 years interest. However, now it's going to be, you know, uh, subjected to withholding tax. Therefore, you're going to adjust it to uh, withholding tax at 15%. Therefore, it will be 85%. The, the net return will be 85% return uh, on the 140% uh, you've made. So there is 15% withholding tax on the interest, not on the principal, but on the interest. And uh, that is the only uh, you know, uh, taxation that happens. Thank you, Sifa. Now, and uh, it's good to talk about the management fee. Now for the site on money market fund, uh, it has the management fee of uh, 2%, and it's 2% on the total portfolio. However, it's important to know that uh, the 2% management fee we charge 
it's net. The 11% you're going to give you as a return on the money market fund will be net of the uh, 2% uh, management fee. Yeah? Therefore, it's not inclusive. The management fee is not inclusive in, uh, you know, the 11% you're giving you or the 14% you're giving you on the site on uh, high yield fund. Therefore, there's a 2% management fee, of course, uh, because you're also uh, an investment company, you are in need for business. Therefore, not just Saiton, but all money market funds are charging a management fee. Some are charging two, others are charging three, and so forth. However, it's important to understand that the Saiton money market fund is only, uh, you know, uh, charging you a 2% management fee. Now, moving on swiftly, uh, you're going to see, uh, now on to the next page, please, Alphonse. You're going to look at uh, our pension products as well. It's important to know that Titan is also uh, offering uh, pension products. And uh, these pension products include uh, uh, segregated funds. Uh, we also have an umbrella uh, retirement package. And uh, we also have uh, what you call uh, a pension, uh, a personal pension uh, scheme for an individual who wants to contribute towards uh, uh, his retirement. And uh, last, but, last but not least, we also have uh, uh, we also have uh, site on uh, income drawdown for individuals who've already retired. Remember, uh, we normally have uh, a piece of legislation for the uh, from government that clearly says that uh, after retirement, a third of uh, the amount. Uh, a third of the amount you're going to be paid as retirement saving, it's going to go uh, towards uh, a provident. Like you're going to be given a lump sum of a third and two thirds is going to use to purchase uh, an income drawdown if it's an investment firm like Cyton, or you can be able to purchase an annuity for those um, you know, from an insurance company that is offering pension products. Therefore, all these pension products are regulated by RBA so therefore, RBA, the Retirement Benefits Authority, uh, is regulating these products. And it's important to understand that uh, regulation includes a ratio in asset allocation. Therefore, ours is a segregated fund. Remember, insurance companies are also offering pension products. But for insurance companies, they are mostly offering uh, what you call guaranteed funds. So guaranteed funds basically are like guaranteeing you 4% return on whatever you're saving with them. However, uh, companies, uh, investment companies, asset managers for investment companies like Cyton and what Cyton you're doing is that you're offering as a, a segregated fund. Therefore, you're not guaranteeing you any amount, let's say 4%, but you're able to give you a segregated return. Therefore, what it means is that whereas you're not guaranteeing you 4%, it means you can be able to give you a rate which is more superior than what insurance companies are guaranteeing. Therefore, segregated funds, again, uh, over the years have been able to outperform uh, guaranteed funds. Therefore, a pension scheme is not just a pension scheme. It's important to understand that we do have guaranteed funds, which have been giving a guarantee, uh, the guarantee of 4% return. Uh, however, we also have segregated funds. Now, for the site on uh, pension uh, products offering, we are guaranteeing you at least uh, a superior return. We're talking about a return which is between 12 to 15%. That is uh, our projected return on our pension product because we don't guarantee you a return. However, for example, our counterparts, which are the insurance companies, are giving you a guaranteed return. And what it means by guaranteeing you, they're going to tell you, yeah, thank you for your money. Thank you for saving with us, but you're going to guarantee you 4%. However, Whereas you're guaranteeing you 4%, you lock hard and give you something more on top of it. Therefore, you've been able to see a survey which is conducted. Most pension funds are giving a return of around 6 to 7%. That what that means is that they're guaranteeing you 4% and they're giving you an additional return of, let's say, 3%. Therefore, they're able to give you an amount around, uh, you know, 7% return or 6%. However, it's important to know that uh, whenever you're going to invest, make sure that you're investing at a rate that can be able to outperform inflation. 
Remember, we going to whenever you're going to walk into any investment a bank or you know any bank to invest, and then they're giving you a rate of return of let's say five percent on your savings or on your investment, be it a fixed deposit. It's important to ask what is the rate of inflation because at the end of the day you're going to adjust for inflation, and if they're giving you five percent return per annum, remember the rate of inflation is five point six two currently. Therefore, that's sending a message to you that whereas they're giving you this 5% and you're happy about it, remember also inflation is eating into the value of your investment at 5.62 because inflation uh, basically gives us, uh, you know, a, a rate at which, uh, you know, the cost of goods and services is rising per annum. Therefore, it's important to understand that it's good to invest your funds at a rate that can be able to outperform inflation. And what I mean is that a rate which is way above the rate of inflation. Yeah, so moving on, uh, maybe I can be able to talk about, uh, I've already spoken about segregated funds. I've spoken about Umbrella. Umbrella fund is basically meant for small and medium companies, whereby you can be able to come to Saiton and invest in the Saiton Umbrella fund for a medium company, a small company. And then we also have uh, a Saiton pension uh, you know, for personal, you can be able to come in and invest as an individual into these products uh, because uh, you can opt, maybe you're not employed, uh, but you want to save towards your retirement. And also, assuming you've also retired, you've been given your uh, pension and you've been told to buy an income drawdown or you want to buy uh, maybe, let's say, um, an annuity or a, an income drawdown, therefore, it's good you choose Saiton because Saiton is giving you uh, a segregated fund that is giving you a superior return. So the advantage of a, in, an income drawdown over an annuity is an income drawdown has no aspect of insurance. Remember, an annuity is giving you an insurance. It's telling you maybe uh, you've invested your $5 million in, a, in an annuity. Now, how much do you want to be receiving every month? And you say, maybe I want to be receiving 50000 Therefore, they're going to say, yeah, whereas you're going to be earning this 50,000, in an event you don't die for the next 10 years, therefore we'll continue paying you that 50,000. In case uh, you don't pass on, we'll pay you that 50,000 until you die. However, uh, you're also given a clause whereby they're going to tell you, what if you pass on, yet we'll be remaining with your amount? How much do you want you know, your beneficiary to be receiving? Therefore, it's again giving you options. Therefore, because of that uh, insurance aspect, they're going to give you a very low rate and therefore they're going to charge you a lot because now they've introduced a new feature. Now, however, on an annuity, you're going to tell you, well, thank you for your 5 million. You've invested in the site on annuity income or uh, sorry, income drawdown, not an annuity. Now you'll be receiving, let's say 50,000 or let's say 25,000 until the amount is uh, you know, until maybe the next, for the next 20 years, after which you have an option to renew the annuity or withdraw your amounts and go on. And therefore you can be able to see an income drawdown has a clear inheritance uh, because you're clearly, you're going to give us your next of kin. Therefore in an event you pass on, your next of kin is going to get 100% of the remaining amount, a feature which is not available on the annuity in an insurance company. You cannot be able to get 100% when you're uh, you know, a dependent uh, of, an, of someone who's been uh, receiving uh, an annuity. Now, you're going to move on to the next slide, please, Alphonse. And uh, we're going to look at, uh, Alphonse, can you hear me? Thank you. Now, you're going to look at investing in fixed income. I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to take you through. Uh, now, investing in a fixed income simply means uh, you're investing in an investment vehicle that is going to, you know, give you regular uh, returns in, in the name of coupons, and at the same time, you're going to benefit uh, from the power, you know, from the interest that uh, a fixed income instrument is giving. Therefore, an investment in fixed income is basically an asset to the investor, considering you will be receiving. Uh, a regular uh, return in the name of a coupon, whatever you call interest, be it monthly, uh, quarterly, or so forth. Therefore, it's going to enable you uh, earn a regular return from the investor who's uh, offering the fixed uh, income uh, product. 
at the same time, uh, you're going to benefit yourself from the power of interest, be it uh, compounding interest, or sometimes it can be simple. So fixed income instruments uh, can be uh, offered uh, by government, and uh, we're talking about uh, uh, you know, products such as uh, you know, uh, treasury bills, treasury bonds, and uh, treasury bills being short-term, treasury bonds being long-term. Therefore, you're going to benefit yourself uh, from those particular uh, you know, uh, re rates of return, yields that are associated with the, um, these uh, fixed instruments. Now, uh, so a, a, a fixed income investment is basically an asset or an item uh, acquired with the goal of generating income. And I've said that the, the, the income uh, is fixed and then you can be able to get this income or the coupon monthly, quarterly or so forth. Uh, you can be able to invest in a fixed income or uh, investment in the alternative market or you can be able to invest in the public markets like I said. The best examples of alternative markets is real estate, private equity, or structured uh, products. Uh, you can move on to the next page and see the overview of investments in fixed income. Now, you can be able to see on slide 11 that uh, we do have traditional investments and alternative investments. Traditional investments are basically investing in the public markets. We are talking about equities, you're talking about uh, investing in the stock market. You're talking about fixed income instruments like treasury bills, treasury bonds, fixed deposits in banks, and so forth. Therefore, those are the, the traditional uh, investments. Therefore, in terms of description, you can say equities as traditional investments uh, are normally uh, they are kind of liquid investments that are investing you know, in uh, the stock exchange whereby the prices are visible. You can be able to see how much uh, you know, this company was trading at how much uh, the share price was. Therefore, they are more visible. Whereas uh, in the traditional investments as well, you can as well see there are category of fixed income products that are liquid as well, uh, because investing in a bank deposit is a kind of liquid investment. Investing in a treasury bill is liquid. Therefore, uh, it's important to understand that investing in uh, fixed income instruments in the public markets, these, in, uh, these uh, particular investments are highly sensitive to interest. The interest rate is highly sensitive. Uh, therefore, it's subjected, uh, it's highly subject to the, uh, uh, you know, changes in the market. Uh, therefore, you can easily say that uh, the central bank of Kenya can easily uh, pass, uh, you know, a monetary policy through its, uh, the monetary policy committee that is going to reduce the interest rates banks are offering. Therefore, it's going to affect the interest rates in banks or they can be able to reduce the rates or they increase the rates they're giving in their, uh, their government papers. Therefore, that one uh, means that investing, you know, in the fixed income in the traditional market is highly sensitive. The rates can be able to go up. So if uh, the yields on uh, government papers, for example, the government bonds is going to go high, it means bank interests are going to go low and vice versa. If bank interests are going to go high, uh, there's a high likelihood uh, already the yields on the government papers has already gone down. Therefore, that one uh, is likely to have an effect on even the yields you're giving in money markets, considering money market funds have you know, government papers as and, uh, you know, bank deposits as uh, the underlying investment classes. Therefore, the return you're giving on uh, the fixed income is also called a coupon and uh, you can have your principal upon maturity of this particular investment. Now, on the other side, alternative in investments are uh, investments which are done in the private markets. They include private equity. When you venture into a business with a name of, you know, making the processes work and you can be able to, you know, uh, rip from the returns after you've made uh, the company uh, jump back maybe into profitability and so forth. That's a private equity venture. Therefore, private equity ventures generally are illiquid investments, considering that you have to wait for the companies, you have to wait to sell off your stake, you have to wait uh, you know, the, for the company to start uh, operating or to jump back into profitability. Um, and it's difficult to price, considering that uh, we are an emerging market, and uh, this is the first time uh, alternative markets are being exploited for the first time in Kenya. Therefore, in terms of pricing, is a bit uh, uh, difficult. And number three, you can be able to see uh, this one is attributed by the lack of availability 
uh, of transaction data. We don't have benchmarks in the private markets before. This is the first time you're trying to venture as a country. Uh, various asset managers, various investment companies are venturing into private markets or private equity for the first time. Therefore, there is that uh, difficulty in pricing as a result of uh, the unavailability of data or yardsticks we can use. Now, moving on swiftly, we also have asset class real estate here, which is the liquid as well, considering that you have to build so that you'll be able to exit by selling. And therefore, however, it's important to know that uh, investments in asset class real estate gives you, uh, you know, a, a hedge against inflation. Yeah. And uh, we are on slide 11. Alphonse, please, you can turn out to the next slide. That's where I am, yeah. I'm on uh, explaining what an alternative investment is. You can be able to say traditional markets, we have traditional investments, and then we have alternative investments. I've already been uh, taking you through the traditional investments in uh, equities, that is the stock market and fixed income, and then I've already taken you through the alternative investments, that is investing in private equity, uh, taking advantage uh, of uh, opportunities in different camps, uh, companies, be it hospitality, be it education, uh, be it investments in uh, the financial markets through private equities, and you're able to make a good return and pass it down to investors. Now, we also have asset class real estate uh, as the last point. Uh, real estate is basically an illiquid asset. Therefore, it means investing in, in real estate, it means that you're exposing yourself into liquidity risks. Now, liquidity risk simply means you're not going to access your funds easily. It doesn't mean that the money is going to be lost. Uh, you know, most Kenyans, whenever they hear risk, they run away. There's no investment that has no risk. Investing in the public markets, the traditional investments, you know, uh, has interest rate risk. We already saw, we already saw on fixed income the, that the interest rates are highly sensitive to, you know, interest rates uh, fluctuations. For example, if you increase the interest rates or the yield on the government papers, it means the interest rates, the bank interest rates are likely to come down. Or if you're going to you know, increase, uh, decrease or reduce the yields in uh, treasury bills or bonds, it means the interest rates are going, the bank's interest rates are going to go high. Therefore, it means there's that uh, liquidity risk you're exposing yourself. And therefore, investments, uh, most investments in uh, fixing income investments in the public markets they have that kind of uh, interest rate risk. However, now when you're going to alternative assets, alternative investments, you have a liquidity, therefore it's exposing yourself, it's exposing your investment to uh, liquidity risk, considering you cannot readily convert investments that have been done in private equity or have been done in uh, real estate into cash. You have to wait for the project to end, you have to wait for maturity, you have to wait to sell the property so that you can have uh, the principal back, therefore, that is a liquidity risk uh, because you cannot access your funds whenever. However, it's important to know that uh, whereas you're having a liquidity risk, you're going to have a hedge on inflation. What it means is that you're going to have a high return, which is way above the rate of inflation. The rate of inflation currently is 5.62. When you invest in real estate and you have a return of, let's say, 20%, it means that you've really outperformed inflation. Therefore, you have a hedge. Therefore, investments in real estate, asset class real estate, uh, they have a hedge against inflation and uh, uh, you're going to have a superior return. Therefore, it's a delicate balancing act between risk and reward when you're going to invest you know, in traditional assets vis-a-vis uh, -vis when you invest in the alternative assets. Therefore, it's a risk return trade-off. Uh, therefore, you have to give up on one uh, feature of uh, the products when you want to access the other. So for example, if you're investing in the, you want to invest in the traditional uh, investments, you're going to give up good return so that you enjoy liquidity. So that, that is a trade-off. However, when you want to invest in the alternative assets so that you uh, enjoy the superior return, you're going to have a trade-off and uh, give up the liquidity feature. Therefore, you're going to expose yourself to illiquidity, but at the same time, you're going to take advantage or enjoy the good return we have in the alternative assets. Now, fixed income itself as a definition, and you can move to slide number 13, uh, you can be able to categorize it as uh, 
uh, as, as that security that is giving you guaranteed returns to the investor. However, later on, we'll see some fixed income instruments also, uh, the return they're giving is subject to the prevailing market conditions, for example, money market funds. Uh, however, it's important to note that uh, we have two types of fixed income. We do have government uh, fixed income products, and we also have uh, corporate, let's say, uh, fixed income instruments which are being given by, uh, you know, other non-government, uh, uh, you know, players in the market. So for government uh, uh, offers two types of fixed income. They can be long-term or short-term. So for long-term, we have government bonds. And for short-term, we have government bills. So those are treasury bonds, which are long-term, can go up to 30 years. And then we have short-term uh, government papers, which are called treasury bills. I said earlier that a treasury bill can either be a 91-day treasury bill that is giving a return. Currently, uh, it's being auctioned at 7.2% per annum, or you can have a 182-day uh, uh, treasury bill, and this paper is uh, giving a return currently of 8.15. And uh, lastly, we have a 364-day treasury bill. This paper is giving a yield of 9.1%. Therefore, you can be able to see that all uh, these treasury bills are really giving a very superior uh, yield. Therefore, when uh, the yields on these government papers is high, it means uh, the yield on the interest rates is likely to be lower. Uh, however, uh, for on the corporate world, an equivalent of a treasury bond is called a corporate bond. And an equivalent of a treasury bill, it's called a, treasury, a commercial paper. So whereas governments are giving treasury bills, which are short term, also corporates are giving commercial papers. And uh, when, uh, you know, treasury, you know, when the government is giving treasury bonds, which are long term, also corporates can be able to give corporate bonds. And you can be able to see we also have the debentures, which are just lying there between, you know, corporate bonds and commercial papers. And therefore, we also have fixed deposits in banks. And remember, term deposits can either be fixed deposits, which are uh, uh, fixed, and you can as well have call deposits. Uh, which are uh, short term, you can be able to get money, your money back on call. Now, I've already taken you through an annuity. Uh, uh, like I said, an annuity is give, it's, it's that instrument uh, that is a pension product which is being given to retirees. An annuity mostly is being issued by an insurance company, whereas an uh, investment company like Saiton will give an income drawdown. And the difference between an annuity with an income drawdown is that an annuity has an insurance aspect, whereas an income drawdown uh, necessarily doesn't have uh, an insurance aspect. And uh, it's easier when it comes to managing your funds. Uh, an income drawdown is very flexible compared to an annuity. Now, whenever you want to invest in a government uh, bond, we have what you call a par value. A par value is basically a face value uh, of that particular bond. Therefore, is the amount that is returned to you as a bond investor upon maturity. A coupon rate, whatever people call it an interest rate, is simply the interest earned on the investment. So a coupon is normally paid, can be paid monthly, annually, uh, semi-annually, or even quarterly, depending on the arrangement you have. Now, yield is basically the return to the investor, and a maturity date is uh, basically the date you're going to get back your principal. So assuming you've, you've invested in a bond, you've been given the date uh, the bond will mature. So the issuer will pay the hold of that bond, the face value of the bond. Remember in Kenya, the treasury bonds, the issuer is normally the treasury, that is the government of Kenya. Yeah. And the issuing agent is the central bank of Kenya. So the issuing price is basically the original price of the bond when it was issued. Remember, the price can be able to change. Yeah. Now, moving on swiftly, uh, we can be able to look at bonds. You can move to the next slide kindly. Uh, we can be able to see that uh, interest rates, I was, I was telling you this concept that as the yield on a bond or on a government paper increases, it means the interest rates in banks and commercial banks are going to go low. Therefore, the two are working uh, 
towards, they pull them towards opposite direction. So as the return on the bond increases, the interest rates in banks is likely to go down. Therefore, that one sums up the interest rate risk we are talking about, especially when you've invested in uh, banks and uh, you know, money market funds. Number two, when you've invested in bonds, there is uh, there are risk associated. Uh, let me take you through. First of all, there is a default risk, assuming that uh, the issuer is not going to live up to the obligations of a particular bond. We also have a reinvestment risk in the sense that there's a high likelihood that you cannot be able to invest in that particular bond after this particular bond you've invested in has matured. So for example, if you walk to Saiton and invest maybe in a particular government bond, and you don't, uh, at, and upon maturity, you want again to reinvest in that particular bond at the same rate, it means there is a high likelihood you know, you're not going to get that particular rate because these rates keep going up and down. Therefore, you as an investor, you're going to be exposed to a reinvestment risk. The inability for you to roll over that investment at the same rate or the inability for you to get that particular rate and uh, for that particular bond. Therefore, rates are likely to change. Therefore, you are exposed to reinvestment risk. Uh, inflation risk is, the uh, is, is that risk that uh, the bonds are not going to give you a rate that is going to outperform inflation. So if you're going to, to invest at a rate which is not above inflation, therefore, it, it means that uh, uh, your investment is going to lose value. However, inflation uh, risk means uh, there's a high likelihood that inflation is likely to rise assuming you've invested in a long-term you know, rate uh, bond of, uh, let's say, 30 years, uh, you don't know how inflation will be able to, how inflation will be rising throughout all those 30 years. Therefore, you are exposing your investment to inflation risk. Therefore, as you get, let's say, 13% from a bond of, uh, let's say, 25 years, there's a bond uh, that government issued some time back, of 25, of, uh, of 25 years and the rate of return was around 13.4. So the inflation risk, it, it means that you don't know how much the rate of inflation in the country will be growing at the rate. So basically, when you're going to adjust for inflation, for example, this year, assuming you're going to adjust for inflation and uh, you know, the rate of inflation is 5.62, you never know what you know, the average uh, rate of inflation next year will be. Therefore, you are exposing yourself to inflation risk. But I like to repeat that it's important to invest at a rate that can be able to outperform inflation, a rate which is way above the rate of inflation. And clearly, you can be able to see Saiton as uh, all the products you're issuing are giving rates which are way above inflation. Now, corporate bonds, I've already taken you through the corporate bonds. Corporate bond is just uh, a replica of a government bond. It's only that is being uh, issued by a private entity or a private company. Uh, for government bonds, uh, these are treasury bonds. They can be treasury bonds, they can be zero coupon bond, they can be municipal bonds, though in Kenya you don't have any county bonds so far. Uh, they can be infrastructure bonds that don't charge you any, uh, whereby you're not charged any withholding tax. Uh, moving on to treasury bills, kindly you can jump to the next page. Treasury bills are generally short term, and uh, what they give you is the benefit of uh, maturity of less than one year, yeah? Like I said, we have a 91-day paper, 182-day paper, and the 364-day paper, yeah? Now, investing in a, in a, a 91-day paper, it's uh, normally deemed to be the, uh, the, the most less risky investment you can do. So for example, in the US, if you invest in a 190, in a 91-day paper in the US, it simply means that you're investing at a, a risk-free investment. That is a risk-free investment. Therefore, in Kenya, currently, a 91-day paper is being auctioned at 7.2%. That is the return. The 182-day paper is being auctioned at uh, 8.1%. And the 364-day paper is being auctioned at 9.1% as interest. However, it's important to know that you need a, you need a broker to take you through whenever you want to purchase. Uh, you know, treasury bill. And the Saiton Money Market Fund, through the Saiton Wealth Management, we are able to help our investors purchase these various uh, government securities, uh, be it treasury bills or bonds. And the minimum to purchase a treasury bill is 100,000. 
And uh, I say the longer the maturity date, the higher the return, basically because investment is a function of the period. Therefore, the more the period of investments, the better the return. And what that means is that you're forfeiting all the opportunities out there only to commit in this particular paper. Therefore, it's only fair for these individuals or uh, government to give you a superior return. The same we've been able to see from fund managers. Uh, so for example, in Cyton, if you're investing in the, uh, you know, the Cyton Hill solution or the Cyton project node, for one year, the rate of return is uh, 15, uh, for one year, the rate of return is 18%, for two years is 19%, and for three years is 20%. So all that uh, is normally taken into consideration. And uh, moving on, uh, can be able to see now on this, we're talking about fixed deposits. Uh, fixed deposits are normally issued by banks and uh, some non-financial companies. And uh, fixed deposits are basically giving you a rate of return. And uh, as the name suggests fixed, the rate as well is fixed. And also the, the tenor, the period of investment is fixed. Uh, and the current rate of fixed deposits in Kenyan banks is averaging around 6%. Now, moving on to treasury bonds, uh, we've been able to say that uh, I think this is uh, more like a reputation, but let me just take you through that uh, treasury bonds are long-term instruments whereby you can be able to invest for a long period of time and uh, be able to tap into the opportunities that government is giving you. We've already uh, seen uh, the different uh, you know, opportunities that government is giving in terms of return. Uh, I think some time back we had uh, you know, a 25-day treasury bond paper that was giving a return of the uh, 25-year treasury uh, bond that was giving a return of around 13.4. Uh, uh, there is that general uh, you know, understanding that governments don't default, but they do. Uh, because there's that default risk uh, that you're likely to be exposed. We've seen countries go down, say Greece, Venezuela, and so forth. Therefore, that element of risk, uh, that perception that, that governments don't default, it's a false uh, perception, and uh, governments do default. Now, uh, moving on to the next slide, we've been able to say that uh, uh, Treasury bonds are also giving you flexibility, uh, since uh, central government is auctioning uh, different uh, treasury bonds uh, regularly, we also have security. There's that concept that government don't default. We also have regular uh, regular returns, what we call coupon, and uh, we also have that uh, uh, you know government bonds are normally auctioned on a, you know there's that monthly basis. Uh, government bonds are normally auctioned regularly. Therefore, you can be able to join uh, government bonds whenever you want to. You can be able to invest whenever. Now, moving on to, you know, the other uh, slide, sorry. You can be able to see uh, corporate bonds on the other side. Corporate bonds are also long-term. Uh, they are more risky than government because there's a high likelihood of a corporate defaulting than government because government has multiple sources of revenue. However, you can be able to see they also have a longer period of uh, maturity of up to 30 years. Corporate bonds are also you know, issued to raise capital for this particular, the same way government is raising capital through you know, the government bond so that you can be able to supplement its budget, be it on infrastructure or uh, be it in uh, other development projects it has. Corporate bonds also tend to raise uh, capital to the particular uh, companies that are issuing these uh, bonds. And therefore the target is normally institutional investors. These investors can be uh, domestic or uh, can be international investors. Uh, we also seen that, uh, you know, investors in bonds are prone to credit risks from the fact that companies can be able to run into illiquidity. Therefore they expose themselves to that kind of risk. However, you also have interest risk uh, considering that, uh, uh, you know, these bonds are not secured by, you know, collateral. However, you can be able to see advantage of a corporate bond is that they offer a superior return more than what government is giving. Therefore, it's a bit competitive. Now that uh, you're investing in a corporate, uh, most corporates tend to give a more superior return 
than whatever government is issuing. Therefore, they are more competitive in terms of return. Uh, there is liquidity aspect because it's easy for you to walk into that corporate and talk to them uh, in an event you want to liquidate. And also they are offering investors an opportunity to diversify. Like we said, uh, government has no business in business in the sense that government don't invest a lot. But when you've invested in a corporate bond, you're going to uh, you know, have uh, multiple uh, diversity in terms of underlying uh, investment classes. This corporate is going to invest a lot and you're going to enjoy uh, from this benefit. Now, moving on to the next page, uh, this is a Q and A question. Uh, it's a question session. Uh, it's a Q and A section. You can be able to ask uh, any question maybe to do with the, our offering. However, before we go to that, I'd like to uh, maybe uh, jump you back to slide uh, slide 14, whereby you're going to talk about the collective investment schemes. However, now I'm going to narrow it down to the structured products we offer as a company as well. The products which are not uh, under regulation, because I know that one has really been of interest to many people. And uh, remember these products, as, uh, they have been uh, really out there in terms of uh, people really know about them. And uh, we've really been doing well in these products. And we've been able to embrace structured finance by taking all the benefits you're having in the public in the alternative markets. And you take the benefits you have in the public markets, put them together in a process, in a process called structuring. And you're able to come up with uh, uh, you know, uh, a structured product that can be able to give the investor the best return out there in the market at the lowest possible risk. At the same time, the investor is going to enjoy some partial form some slight liquidity. Therefore, uh, Cyton as a fund manager has been able to come up with structured products that are private placements. And uh, these products are able to tap into the opportunities we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the alternative assets, in the private markets. These opportunities include uh, real estate. Uh, these opportunities include uh, you know, uh, private equity. And uh, from this private equity and real estate, you're able to get uh, superior returns and uh, we're able to turn them back to the client. So when you're going to invest for a period of, uh, uh, you know, let's say three months, you get 15%. You invest in six months, you get 16%. Uh, you invest in, um, you know, uh, nine months, you get uh, 17%. You invest for one year, you get 18%. So what that means is that uh, investment is a function of the period. So the longer the period, it means you're forfeiting other opportunities out there. And out of the 100 opportunities you have, Cyton is able to give you, to guarantee you 18 of those opportunities. Therefore, when you invest in the Cyton High Yield Solution for one year, you get 18% per annum. And like I said, you're trying to compete in the loan market. Therefore, instead of you going to fix a fixed deposit in a bank, Instead, you're going to bring that money to site and you're going to lend that money. Therefore, as exposed to you in you know, fixing your money in the bank and exposing yourself to the depositors risk, you're going to lend that money to Cyton. So you're going to expose, you're going to be a lender. You're participating in the loan market and therefore you're going to expose yourself to the lender's risk instead. And Cyton is going to take this money. We invest this money in the various investment classes we have, especially in the private markets, and you're going to uh, pass on the return to you, who's the investor. And uh, for one year, it's 18%. If it's a note, for one year, it's 18%. If it's a real estate note, two years is 19%, and for three years, is 20%. I think I'm going to take uh, questions. Uh, kindly type, you can be able to type the question, and I can be able to answer. Uh, I think I, at one point I left the meeting and then I rejoined. So I, uh, I lost all the Zoom chats that I had. Maybe if you, uh, if you can allow me, Alphonse, uh, you can allow the members to uh, maybe type uh, the questions in the group chat or you can be able to uh, read the questions for me. Yeah, I can be able to see a question from uh, Sami. Uh, he's asking T-bills and bonds uh, affected in case of the market crash? Yeah. So what happens, Sami? Thank you for that question. Yeah, tre treasury bills and bonds can be affected in case of a market crash. 
uh, we saw that in 1929. We saw that in, uh, you know, in 2007, 2008, 2009, during the, uh, the, the recession, the world, uh, you know, economic crisis we had. Uh, so what happens is that there is a point whereby uh, government tries to regulate interest rates in banks by making sure that the interest rates in banks are going to go low. So by doing so, they're going to adjust the yields they're giving in treasury bills and other government papers. However, you can be able to see that sometime there reaches a point whereby no further adjustments in the yields they're giving in their government, uh, in their papers on the government securities is going to have an effect on the overall uh, rates banks are giving. Therefore, in terms of a market crash, uh, treasury bills and bonds are equally affected. Therefore, you are you investing in a treasury bill or a bond, you are as well exposing yourself to the interest rate, uh, interest rate risk, because I said, we can have the Monetary Policy Committee sit and uh, decide to adjust the rates. And uh, that one will uh, likely to have an effect on the, you know, on the, on the rate you're going to get. Not to mention that governments also do default. Uh, in an event of a, an economic uh, a market crash, assuming uh, a government, for example, Greece, for the case of Greece and Venezuela, the government can default in paying these uh, treasury bills and bonds. Treasury bills and bonds are basically a way in which government is trying to raise uh, capital uh, so that it can be able to uh, pay their deficits in the budget so that it can be able to finance its projects, so that it can be able to raise funds to fight a calamity or a pandemic. So in so doing, uh, even governments can be able to make wrong decisions, and there's a high likelihood uh, if a wrong decision is made by government, uh, government is going to default. Uh, therefore, treasury bills and bonds uh, are not exempted either from a market crash. Uh, maybe uh, for those questions I didn't see, maybe I can request, uh, I'm going to request uh, you to retype, please. If uh, the only the only question I can be able to see is from Sami. Thank you, Peter, for retyping. Uh, someone is asking, uh, tell us something about Cyton uh, affordable housing. Cyton affordable housing investment plan. Thank you. Now, remember there is a clause in uh, towards affordable housing, towards saving for retirement. Uh, there is a law, there is a piece of legislation uh, that was passed a uh, long time ago uh, by government that whoever who's saving towards retirement should be exempted from paying taxes. So in so doing, there has to be a vehicle, there has to be a trust where these funds is investing are being placed. There has to be a trust. It can be through a bank. However, you can be able to see that Cytone uh, we've taken an opportunity and we've come up with the Cyton Affordable Housing Investment Plan, what you're calling CAHIP. Now, the Cyton Affordable Housing Investment Plan is simply giving investors an opportunity to save towards house acquisition by not getting unnecessary taxation. So it's going to exempt you, an investor, or uh, um, you know, a prospective home saver a prospective home uh, owner, it's going to, you know, protect you from the taxes that are going to be exposed, uh, you, that your investment should be, or your saving is going to be exposed to, assuming you're investing in the normal investment vehicles, be it a bank or an investment uh, such as the, maybe the site on high yield solution or the site on money market fund. So by you subscribing to the site on affordable uh, housing investment plan, which is called CAHIP, it means you're going to have an underlying trust fund. And this trust fund is a site on money market fund. So when you've subscribed into the site on how affordable housing investment plan, you're going to be exempted from paying withholding tax on your savings or on your investments or savings towards home acquisition. Therefore, you as an investor, you're protected from these kind of uh, uh, interest, uh, you know, interest uh, reductions. Therefore, you'll have an easy time to save towards your investments, uh, to save towards your uh, acqu acquiring uh, home acquisition. Therefore, you're going to sign a form that is a site on affordable investment plan application form. 
and therefore you're going to start contributing from a thousand shillings and uh, slowly you'll be saving towards uh, having a home. Therefore, any amount below three million will be exempted from withholding tax. Therefore, you as an investor, you're encouraged to save towards, uh, you know, uh, acquiring your own house. And remember, the, the amount which has been saved in this uh, site on affordable housing um, investment, it's not subject to withdrawal. Whenever you want to withdraw it, it has to be supported by an evidence that either you're going to build or you're going to buy. Therefore, you need a sale agreement. Maybe you want to purchase a house or you are going to uh, build your own house. Therefore, this investment is exclusively meant for home acquisition. Now, Sam is asking, uh, uh, thank you for the presentation, Michael. Given that MMF is a low risk investment, in case of a market crash, will that be affected? Now, I really understand that uh, maybe Sam is asking this in light of that you're going through an, uh, a health crisis that has culminated to become an economic crisis, uh, considering that uh, we've seen what has happened in the stock market. We've seen that uh, COVID-19 uh, became a trigger for the economic downtown you're experiencing currently. Um, however, before, before I answer your question, it's good to say that uh, all in all, we are headed for you know, an economic downturn. Remember, it's only healthy. It's a healthy, uh, you know, it's a normal and a regular part of any healthy economy to go through, uh, you know, any healthy economy that ebbs and flows through uh, periods of growth followed by periods of contraction. It's only that whatever you're going through right now, not only as a country, but as a world, is an economic downturn. And an economic downturn uh, is normally triggered by many. Uh, it has many triggers. However, this one was not triggered by the normal, you know, economic triggers that we've been seeing previously. This one was triggered by, you know, a virus, a pandemic. Therefore, uh, whereas whatever you're going through is, uh, you know, a regular part of uh, an econo a healthy economy, uh, it's important to know that uh, this downturn cannot be called a market crash. We're yet to go there. We are yet to be, it's yet to be even become a recession because for a recession to happen, uh, econo an economic contraction has to go through two successive full, uh, two, two successful uh, fiscal uh, quarters. Therefore, it's not yet a recession unless we have to go through it. We have to live through it for it to become a recession. Neither is it a depression. But in an event of a market crash, uh, generally, let's look at the underlying investment classes for money market funds. Now, money market funds normally invest in cash deposits, uh, treasury bills, which are so which are considered to be liquid investments. Uh, when you invested in a term deposit in a bank, in a term deposit in a bank or a call deposit, it means these are liquid investment. Therefore, whereas there will be exposure in terms of. Uh, you know, exposure to the market crash, money market funds are simply giving you, are basically giving you the lowest exposure, exposure in terms of, you know, uh, you maybe standing, uh, you know, a chance of losing your investment. Therefore, there, is, there will be exposure considering it's a market crash, yeah, because of the interest rate risk in terms of the yields of, uh, you know, the treasury bills or government papers going high. It means the interest rates are going to go low Therefore, it will have a ripple effect on the overall yield in the money market fund. Therefore, there will be exposure in terms of uh, money market fund, but the rate of the, you know, the, the, the overall exposure is low. Therefore, money market funds are considered to be low risk, open-ended and short-term investment vehicles. Therefore, from that, uh, you know, that uh, particular uh, aspect of a money market fund, being short term, the ability to withdraw anytime, the ability to move out, easy of entry and easy of exit, therefore give money market funds uh, that feature or rather the best uh, feature of being the lowest in terms of risk exposure. Thank you, Sami, for that question. Now, there's someone asking, uh, sorry, this, I think this Alphonse is saying if someone, uh, if uh, there's anyone who has a question to unmute and ask, oh, sure, sure. 
can you can be oh i can see a question from brian brian is asking uh, the difference between cyton asset managers and cyton investment managers in plc sorry sorry i didn't uh, do this during the introduction that is a good question uh, brian uh, thank you for that so cyton investment management plc is the mother company is uh, you know we have a group holding we have the mother company under it we have subsidiaries. So let's start with the mother company, which is the Cyton Investment Management PLC. So the Cyton Management PLC is the mother company. Under it, we have subsidiaries. The first subsidiary is the regulated arm of Cyton Investment. The regulated arm of Cyton Investment uh, Management P uh, PLC is the Cyton Asset Managers. Cyton Asset Managers is the company that is regulated, is the regulated arm of Cyton Investment Management PLC. And uh, it has uh, two bodies. It is regulated by two trade bodies. Then the two trade bodies are the Capital Markets Authority that is largely uh, you know, regulating the collective investment scheme products that I've already taken you through that include the Cyton Money Market Fund, Kenya Shillings, the Cyton Money Market Fund, uh, USD, the Cyton uh, Balance Fund, the Cyton Equity Fund, the Cyton High Yield Fund, the Cyton um, Africa Financial Services Fund, and last but not least, the new uh, Cyton Fixed Income Fund that is uh, yet to be uh, uh, you know, started out there. So the Cyton Asset Manager, uh, Cyton Asset uh, uh, Managers is a regulated arm of Cyton Investment Management. Uh, and also, we also have uh, other regulation, other regulated products under the Cyton Asset Managers, which include uh, the retirement benefits uh, scheme products that include the segregated, the Cyton segregated funds, uh, the Cyton income drawdown fund, the Cyton umbrella uh, pension uh, uh, scheme, uh, the Cyton uh, personal, uh, you know, uh, retirement uh, scheme that you can be able to invest as an individual, uh, and so forth. So basically, uh, Cyton Investment Management PLC is a mother, is a group uh, holding. Under it, you have the Cyton Asset Managers, the one that is issuing the collective investment schemes and the pension products we have. Uh, we also have the Cyton uh, uh, you know, uh, private equity uh, subsidiary that does private equities placement in real estate and uh, hospitality, education, and the financial services. And we also have the Cyton uh, you know, technologies that deal with uh, you know, coming up with technological solutions out there, be it IT related and so forth. Now, uh, there's someone who's asking, does that mean only the regulated firm uh, suffer? Okay, there's someone who's asking kindly, let me repeat the question. Does that mean only the regulated firm is safer to invest with? Now, let me, uh, let me an answer you uh, that regulation generally uh, plays a major role when it comes to, you know, licensing and also asset allocation, yeah? So what it means is, uh, at the end of the day, is the fund manager who's going to make those decisions. So before you invest, it's good you look at the track record of the fund manager, the expertise of the fund manager, the talent of the fund manager, yeah? So when you're going to invest in a particular fund manager, it's important to look at the fund manager, you look at the expertise and the track record of the fund manager. Because at the end of the day, whereas the product is offered under regulation, it doesn't mean that that product is not, you know, subject, uh, you know, to, you know, many, many risks that uh, can be associated as a result of the wrong decision the fund manager is making. We've seen many funds, money market funds, I don't want to mention. There is one money market fund that has already been uh, affected as a result of a wrong decision the fund manager made in uh, allocating the assets in a particular commercial paper. There are very many banks out there that have been able to fall. We saw Imperial Bank and uh, Chase Bank and so forth. I don't want to mention them. They all fell at the watch of the regulator. So it doesn't mean that regulation really means protection so that you go in, uh, into an investment blind just because there is regulation. What it means is you can even have an unregulated product which is privately placed. For example, the Cyton High Yield Solution or the Cyton Project Notes. But because you know the track record of the fund manager, the talent or rather the experience the fund manager has, you can be able to go in, uh, you know, and uh, you can be able to trust the fund manager who can be able to make the best 
uh, decisions on uh, your behalf as the investor, and uh, you're likely to uh, you know make a good return at the same time. You'll ensure that your funds are going to remain safe. I don't know, Sami, you had a question, please. Mr. Ochi, I think I've already answered. Yeah, there's another question. Does that mean that only regulated farm is safer to invest in? I've already answered that. Uh, there's another one saying, invest in the Cyton High Yield Solution, the Cyton uh, Real Estate Project. That is a Cyton Project note. Uh, we'll have to wait for three months longer if they are to recoup the investments according to the company statement issued on 19th April 2020. Can this be seen as a sign of default? No, no. Now, uh, it's true. And that is a good question. Uh, it's true that uh, uh, we're living in uh, a financial uh, or an economic crisis. Whatever you've gone through, we're going through as not only as uh, a country, but also world over, uh, the markets or rather the countries are undergoing through an economic downturn that is likely to culminate to become a recession, but you're yet to live through that. So what happens is that fund managers world over, especially fund managers that are managing real estate funds, real estate funds, that is funds that are invested in real estate, whose real estate is informing the major underlying investment class, have to come up with ways in which they are going to protect the fund. So remember, investment managers or other fund managers are not magicians to live through this period of crisis without making any adjustments, yeah? We've seen banks have come up with ways in which they're going to cushion their investors and uh, maybe from loan repayments. And you have to walk into that uh, banking hall and talk to the relationship person so that they adjust your loan, so that they give you an easy you know, uh, way for the, for the next three months as we wait as the effects of COVID-19 continue enduring. The same has happened to the Cyton real estate. Remember, Cyton Real Estate has two products which are supporting the real estate that include the Cyton High Yield Solution and the Cyton Project Note. Now, all these funds depend on the real estate sales because we have an underlying asset. Yeah, remember when you're investing in these funds, you're not going to let the funds sit in a bank account and then magic happens and then we give you the 18% you're giving for one year, which is fixed. The funds have to go through investment. There has to be private placements in real estate. You have to commit these funds into real estate investments so that you can be able to generate 25% uh, return from these properties in uh, high-end areas like Karen, uh, Kiambu, and even Kilimani so that you can be able to pay you the 18% and be able to keep around 6-7% uh, to, to ourselves. So that's how the model is sustained. So the fund manager moved in Considering that you are experiencing this economic crisis, it means those people who had pledged, those people who had already reserved these units are not able to pay regularly as before because a huge chunk of the people who bought into a real estate are residing in the diaspora. So it means our investors uh, who've bought our properties are not able to pay on a regular basis. Some of them are going slow. So what that one means is that you are not able going, we are not going to be able to pay those maturities in an event, even if we pay, you're going to strain in terms of maturity payments during this period of time. And now what the fund manager did in consultation with the investments through the investment advisory board, they sat down and foresaw this because people are paying for these houses, people are paying these uh, mortgages are Kenyans like you who are working so that they can be able to pay for their houses. They're also, uh, their jobs have been affected, uh, be it in the diaspora, here in Kenya, some companies are going for, you know, cutting the payroll to half, so they're paying less. So this one has affected our investors, especially the people who bought into these properties, that all that means is that you are going to collect less or there will be a slow collection from the property market so far. Therefore, in return, it is going to affect the fund. So are we going to continue paying maturities during this COVID-19 period of three months? Yeah, we can, but you are going to strain in terms of paying these maturities. So instead, 
the company uh, represent, uh, representatives in the investment advisory board in consultation with the representatives we have from the investments, they decided, they came up with a, a solution of pushing maturities during this uh, COVID-19 period for the next three months so that we can be able to have the fund survive through this three month period of COVID-19 as we wait uh, for the effects of COVID-19 to endure and uh, the end. Therefore, we're waiting. So what the company decided to do is to push maturities uh, for a period of three months. And uh, that one will help the fund sustain, especially during this uh, COVID-19 period. Therefore, it's true. We only pushed maturities forward. However, it does not mean that you won't be paying interest or you won't be paying uh, interest during this period of time. Therefore, uh, the longevity of these investment tenors was increased by three months. However, coupon payment will continue at the same rate uh, you, know, you had agreed uh, during your contract. If it's 18%, it will continue at 18% during this period of time. However, we decided to freeze maturities during this uh, three month period. And therefore, um, this one has also been seen across the world. When you look at all fund managers that are managing uh, pension funds, be it in the UK, be it in the US, be it in India, be it in the Nordic, uh, that is North, Northern Europe countries, we've seen that trend because uh, currently we're having a slow collection from real estate. Therefore, it's going to have a ripple effect on, uh, in terms of uh, paying maturities in these particular funds. So that was the best idea. That was the best uh, move the fund manager had to do so that you can be able to protect. Not to mention also to term emotional investors. You know, you can't really say that uh, uh, funds normally have emotional investors. For example, what we saw in the stock exchange, uh, we've seen, uh, you know, banks suffer runs. So to term that um, emotional decision during the COVID-19, the panic, uh, it's prudent for a fund manager to come up with these measures so that they can be able to protect all the investors in, the, in this particular fund. But uh, coupon payment continues. Now, there's another question here. I can see what is the rate on or before MMF rate payment? Yeah. And does that also mean that you'll push further payment maturities if current situation continues? Now, uh, first of all, for money market funds, we're giving a return of uh, uh, 11%. That 11% is net of, uh, withhold, uh, of management fee. What it means is that uh, we're not charging you a management fee on 11%. 11% is already net. It means the fund manager has already paid himself the 2%. So you're getting 11% on your investment whenever you're going to invest in the site on money market fund. And the 11% is compounding. It's daily compounding. What it means is that interest today will be consolidated to principal and tomorrow you'll have a new principal and so forth. And uh, there's another question. Does that also mean that you'll push further payments of maturities if the current situation continue? Now, you're, you're living through unpredictable times. Yeah. Uh, however, what informed the three months, I don't want to speculate that the company is going to push further. Uh, what informed the fund manager to push for three months is because, uh, you know, the company is, uh, you know, we saw what happened in China, we've seen what happened in uh, uh, South Korea, that the curve, you know, the curve, you know, started flattening after the third month. Yeah. So we are assuming that by the end of a third month, things could have moved back to normalcy we could have flattened the curve. Actually, everything could have come down. We've seen the efforts government is making to tame this. We've seen some partial lockdowns in the, you know, the, the, you know, the places which have been considered to be hotspots, uh, like Isili, we've seen in uh, Mombasa and so forth. Therefore, we believe that government is going to tame this thing. And therefore, on the third month, we're likely to jump back to normalcy and continue paying maturities. Thank you for that question. I don't know whether there's any other question because I really think I'm... Uh, of us spent my time in the presentation. Um, all right, thanks, all right. Thanks, 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 thanks a lot, Michael. I'm seeing there is a, a Liki Karoy who wants to ask a question. Yeah, uh, kindly. Karoy, the platform is uh, open. Kindly ask. Uh, yeah, thank, you, thank you very much. I'm Legakin Karoy. I want to ask about the current um, 
uh, pro properties market. There seems to be a lot of um, kind of for the last one year, there seems to be a lot of shrinking in terms of um, the demand for the properties for the properties market. But I see that Cyton is so much interested in the field. Um, there's so much invest in investment from Cyton. I'm wondering how you, your focus of, on the properties market is going to be in the next, um, maybe in the short term and, and in the long term. And that's so much important in um, determining or in helping investors decide where to invest and what to do next. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kalori, for that question. That is a good question. Uh, it's undeniable that um, the property market, the asset class real estate market, forms our key underlying investment as a company. And uh, you can be able to see that one from the funds and the management we've been able to commit into real estate, asset class real estate products, asset class real estate properties across the country, three of them in Karen, considering that Karen has the largest concentration of international schools, is a paragon of suburban life. It's where who and who's staying. Therefore, doing a project which is good, uh, which is uh, which is high end in current, it means that you're likely to exit easily, as opposed to other players who are doing uh, development in other pockets in Nairobi. Number two, we've also concentrated in uh, doing projects in uh, Kiambu. And uh, what has uh, led us to do a project in Kiambu is uh, because of the you know, irresistible, uh, uh, what I can say, the appealing demographics you're seeing in Kiambu. Uh, it's, it's undeniable that uh, uh, out of uh, top 10 fastest growing towns in uh, Kenya, we have six of them in Kiambu. And uh, you can be able to see the kind of road network we have in Kiambu. You can be able to see amenities we are having in Kiambu. You can be able to see, you know, the population growth in Kiambu. Uh, you can be able to see the UNEP. You can see, be able to see the Two Rivers Mall. Uh, you can be able to see the Windsor Golf Club and so forth. Therefore, in terms of social amenities, it's so appealing. You can be able to look at the demographics, the population. At no one point can you get less than 80% uh, occupancy in those uh, developments, high-end developments we have in Kiambu. Yeah, we have UNEP uh, there, and uh, you can be able to see other amenities there in Kiambu. Kiambu is appealing generally. Therefore, that's what has led us to do projects in places like Ruaka. We have the Alma, we have the Ridge in Ridges, and we have, uh, you know, a project near Tatu City uh, called River Run in, uh, uh, still in Ruiru. Uh, therefore, real estate is about location, location, and location. Uh, it's undeniable that real estate in Kenya has uh, gone through a lot of challenges for the last one year. Uh, it's not been a bubble. It's been a misconception. People, you know, uh, abusing that terminology that uh, real estate is headed for a bubble. What we've gone through is that uh, real estate in Kenya has gone through a soft market. Um, it's not a bubble because uh, the conditions uh, which are here are not uh, like those in the U.S., so it's so difficult. It's actually a false paradigm to say that uh, real estate in Kenya is going through a bubble. What you're having in uh, real estate in Kenya is that uh, we're having banks not ready to finance people to acquire houses or to buy houses. Uh, therefore, the, the majority of uh, you know, the middle and low class uh, people in Kenya, they don't have access to mortgages. You can be able to see even the mortgages uh, we're having in banks the majority, 50%, more than 50% of those mortgages are to uh, the bank staff themselves. Therefore, what you're going through is that banks are not ready to finance uh, people to acquire houses because, again, of the high risk of uh, non-performing mortgage loans in banks. Uh, again, uh, we also now left, as developers, we only left to target the high-end market. Uh, we've been able to say that the high net worth individuals are able to continue getting access mortgages. They're able to access capital to purchase uh, houses. Therefore, as Cytone, since we don't have power to control what uh, banks are doing, we can be able to tap into these high-end markets and do developments in places like Karen, places like Kiambu, uh, Kilimani, and so forth, because we have a ready market. And like I said, our philosophy, you know, into real estate is easy. We have to wait for pre-sales as a sign of uh, the project being viable. We have to do intense research through the deal and, uh, you know, the deal and the research uh, department we have, deal origination and research department. So re real estate is basically about location, location and location. The nearer you are to 
uh, you know, uh, the source, the higher your property value and the higher the, uh, the return and uh, the higher the capital appreciation and the rental yield. Therefore, as Saiton, you're so keen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, getting into any development, uh, getting into any uh, project. And uh, we've already embraced a one project at a go, um, you know, policy whereby we only develop one project, we exit, we hand over to the owners, and then we break ground on the next project. So for example, we started with the Amara region Karen, a project which was, which was consisting of 10 villas. A villa was going for a million dollars each. Uh, we did the development, we sold all, we exited, we began another development in uh, Ruaka, the Alma in Ruaka. We did uh, the Alma in Ruaka, phase one. We handed over more than 113 apartments to the owners last year. And uh, uh, the owners have already moved in. So we moved to uh, phase two of the project. Uh, now we are at the verge of handing over the projects. Uh, until COVID-19, uh, we had this uh, you know, pandemic and uh, this crisis come in. So we are at the verge of handing over Alma phase two, which is already complete. And uh, we're actually working, out, uh, working on the final touches on the project. And then we move on to the third project, which is the region, region is also, it's a mixed use development. Again, you can be able to see the concept you're doing. You're doing a mixed use development. Uh, so you're, you're basically making, a, you know, all under one development. You're making sure there's a nursery that is a daycare so that the people who are going to buy this property are not going to go, are not going to go through the hassle, you know, of waking their kids during ungodly hours to take them to school. So we're giving you a daycare there and a nursery. Uh, we're giving you a laundromat, we're giving you a retail center. So it's all in uh, one particular development. Therefore, uh, these are the new concepts which are coming up and Saiton, we are uh, really making uh, ourselves uh, the leaders in these concepts by making sure that you're building, uh, you're doing projects that have uh, value for money, value for uh, the investors' money, their mixed use developments, they're in the best location, um, we are embracing technology in these particular uh, projects we're doing. Uh, we are embracing pre-sales so that you can be able to see there is that sense, uh, you know, of uh, people really saying that you are able to tap into this and uh, you are able to finish. People, they, they, we have to assess this. We have to see demand. Therefore, uh, our, our, our real estate is uh, targeting the high-end market. However, you have a thousand uh, acres of land in the river for affordable housing, uh, and you're trying to raise funds through a fund, uh, through the site on high yield fund, so that you can be able to do this project in partnership with government uh, uh, as a way of trying to live towards the, one of the key pillars of Agenda 4, which is affordable housing. Therefore, uh, other players are really going through hardships. Uh, however, you can be able to see that Saiton is living through these challenging economic times uh, simply because our concept, our model of real estate uh, is a viable concept. Uh, we're not relying on uh, investors' money to develop. We're raising uh, funds also through our private equity arm to develop. So we don't wait for uh, you, know, uh, you, Mr. Kalori, to bring in funds so that you can be able to complete the unit. Therefore, you can be able to see that you're able to execute easily and uh, you're able to hand over these apartments to the owners uh, because we've done research and we know the best uh, pockets to develop uh, our real estate. Thank you. Hope, hopefully, I really answered your question. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. I can be able to see there is uh, a question from Mr. Ochi who's asking, uh, a 1 million USD unit, a 1 million house, a 100 million Kenya shilling house, any product for the middle and low class in the economy. Now, uh, these 100 million house are not all over. It doesn't mean that all the units you're doing, all the developments you're doing, a house is going for 100 million. It's only two projects we've done, uh, whereby the units are going for 100 million and above. That is the Amara Ridge in Karen and the, you know, and the one... Uh, uh, the upper load, that is in Myotonia, the core of current, which is going for 135 million Kenya shillings. And it's simply because, uh, you know, the, you know it's, the property value is high because it's current. 
However, you can be able to see the, the developments we've done in Kiambu in places like Ruaka. You can be able to afford uh, the units are affordable going from uh, you know, 6.5 million. You can be able to get a property uh, from 10 million and so forth in places like Ridges and so forth. Therefore, we are targeting all players in the market and uh, all uh, you know, all uh, uh, investors, you can be able to get high net worth going for the properties you're doing in current, you can be able to see middle income earners going for the properties we have in, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, in uh, Kiambu. And we also, uh, you know, have a key interest to develop, uh, to get into the affordable housing in, uh, for the low income earners in future. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Ochi. I don't know whether there's any question, uh, I'd like to see whether there's any other. I'd like to take one or two. You can be able to open up and even uh, say whatever you've seen on social media. I know the brand has really been, uh, there's really been a lot of noise around the brand and uh, that is courtesy to people who really uh, want to fight the brand. Yeah, kindly. There is a question. I saw, I saw someone. So today, uh, the 22 of us, at least today, you've been able to understand the whole philosophy, how Cyton is operating, how Cyton is able to tap into the superior returns, how you're able to realize the 18% return you're giving, especially on the structured products, how you're able to lead in the money market funds by issuing 11% for the last one year, how stable we are as a company, uh, the whole uh, you know, concept of being a Cytonair, how you can be able to invest in the Cyton money market fund. Uh, I think going forward now, you really understood how you're operating as a company. And uh, whenever you see someone uh, make noise around the brand, you can easily say that uh, this is not happening. Let's not just pull uh, our local companies, our Kenyan companies down. Let's just support Kenyan companies because we are the people uh, who are going to be beneficiaries, our sisters, our brothers, you never know our sons in future are going to be employed by Saiton. Therefore, let's, let's not pull our, our companies down, our Kenyan, our local companies. Therefore, going forward, at least you can going to be ambassadors of the brand. And uh, it's important to understand that uh, if you need to invest, you can proceed and uh, ask me. Yeah, uh, I can see Julie has a question. Julie, kindly. Can see Julie. Julie Otieno, kindly proceed. You can ask. Kindly unmute, unmute, unmute your mic and uh, ask uh, a question. I can see you have you had a question. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, proceed. I don't know. I think we've lost her. Uh, is there any question? I can be able to pick one or two before maybe we call it uh, call it a session. Yeah, then you can type kindly. Julie, you can type the question there so that I can read to the audience and can be able to take you through, please. You can just simply type if you have a question. I think she's having tech issues. We understand. Yeah, she's, she's, she's typing, I think. Now, anyone can be able to ask as uh, we wait for... Julie to ask the question and uh, to write and uh, raise the issues maybe she's had is the day we are going to demystify what is going on in the social media and what is going on in the even sometimes people are saying friends and uh, relatives you can be able to hear yeah she's asking what is the latest update on CMA versus Saiton case on the trustee issue oh uh, Julie this one is an old uh, it's so it's an old case yeah uh, it was not even a case, actually. What happened is that uh, uh, the site on a money market fund, um, the typical uh, concept of operation of a money market fund is that a money market fund has three uh, players. It has the fund manager, 
who's going to do the asset allocation, who's going to invest, who's going to make the investment decisions. Number two, it has, you know, a custodian. Remember, whenever you're going to bring your money to Saiton to invest in any product you want, be it uh, a regulated product or an regulated product, be it a regulated or a product which is not regulated, you're going to deposit that money, not in an individual bank account, but you're going to invest, you to deposit that money in a custodian bank account. Therefore, we have a fund manager who does the real asset allocation. Number two, we have a custodian who's going to, uh, you know, have those funds and, you know, uh, make the records of the funds, do bookkeeping. So all in all, all these are the players uh, who are going to, basically the role of the fund manager is to make safe custody of the funds and also do bookkeeping, yeah? And lastly, we have a trustee. The role of the trustee is uh, basically uh, do like, is going to be a referee. For example, let me use that one because most of us uh, watch soccer games. So a referee's law is to make sure that you're playing by the rules, yeah? Uh, you're going to, you know, abide by the rules. You're going to ensure that uh, if it's a money market fund, 50% has been allocated in banks, 25% has been allocated in treasury bills, and 25% has been put in a, a good commercial paper. Therefore, the role of the trustee is to do, uh, to ensure that every, both the fund manager and the custodian are playing by the rules, and the role of the custodian is to do bookkeeping and the fund manager makes the investment decisions. So early this year, we'll remember the trustee has a right to pull out whenever they want. Uh, even the custodian has a right to pull out. It's all allowed for, and it's allocated for in the CMA, uh, you know, uh, the collective investment schemes, uh, uh, you know, uh, the piece of legislation that guides collective investment schemes. Therefore, uh, this case, we, early this year, we had our trustee uh, want to pull out to resign because of uh, reasons uh, which were well vested with him. And uh, before you resign as a trustee, you have to assist the existing fund manager to appoint another trustee. So you can't leave a void. You can't leave a, you can't leave a vacuum. You have to assist. Uh, the outgoing trustee has to assist the fund manager to recruit or to appoint a new trustee before he leaves. However, when we went through all the trustees which were available, we came to realize that all those trustees had already been taken up. And uh, uh, so the, the, the existing trustee uh, didn't have an option but to remain. So it's important to understand that this issue was resolved and CMA uh, uh, told the existing trustee, which is Cooperative Bank, to continue offering the services. And we are happy with the Cooperative Bank being our trustee and uh, KCB is our custodian. Uh, so uh, this issue was settled long time ago. And uh, right now the Cyton Money Market Fund, or rather the Cyton Asset Managers, we are, above, we are above board in terms of operation and everything is working. Yeah, thank, thanks, for the, uh, thanks for the question though. Uh,